Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming. My name is Maria Karenko, and I'm part of the Dalit MAT program. Today, I'm going to be presenting research that I've been conducting on cultivating student thinking in the classroom. So just a little background. I conducted my research in the fifth grade class in which I interned this year at the Rashi School in Dedham, Massachusetts. My participants were 14 of my wonderful fifth graders, and I had their pictures here on the last day of school. <laughs> Um, at the beginning of the year, I was a new teacher and I was sort of nervous and new to the practice and I was constantly having to keep all of these different ideas in my head. So of course I was always thinking about the relationship of teachers and students in the content area that I was teaching, but along with that came a lot of other things that I had to keep in mind, like classroom management, the timing of a lesson. Uh, questions that students might ask, uh, activating their prior knowledge, managing call-outs and student comments, and the phrasing of how I phrase things to them. So although I now understand that much of teaching happens in the moment, because I was holding all of these different ideas in my head, I felt like I really had to plan things out. So I would often ask students a question that I already had a very clear idea of what the answer would be in my head. And then in best case scenario, the students would tell me exactly what I was already thinking. And I would say, okay, great, so that's what we'll be talking about today. And this got me thinking, who is really doing the thinking in that situation? Are the students sort of organically having the opportunity to think through their ideas, or am I guiding them so clearly to a predetermined goal that I already have for the lesson that I'm doing the thinking for them? So around this time as I was mulling all of this over, I taught this math lesson. And I had my field instructor, Leslie, who's here, come observe me, and Neely, and um, I think Noreen was there also. And I taught this lesson where I gave students a key, and I wanted them to think of a quadrilateral, and then <coughs> use the key, similar to the one I have up here, to create this glyph, a, a representation of their quadrilateral, and have other students try to guess what it was. And when I debriefed with my professors, they said, well, what if you hadn't given them the key? What if they had to figure out what the most important properties of quadrilaterals were and had to create their own keys to create their glyphs? So I was like, huh, I've never thought about that before. And this really got me thinking about sort of the activities that could activate student thinking in the classroom. And I, around the same time also, I had started thinking about this two-month plant unit that I was going to plan on my own and then um, implement in the classroom. And I thought that that unit would be the best way for me to try to experiment with different ways to explore opportunities for student thinking. So this sort of focused my research question to be, how can I plan a unit in which the activities create opportunities for students to think? And I have activities bolded here because I really, that was really my focus. I thought that that was um, sort of the vehicle that I could use to get students to really think deeply and grow their ideas. So I gave, as Neely can attest to, a lot of thought to the sort of activities that I wanted to put in my unit. Uh, these are just some of them, but I really wanted kids to sort of get down and dirty with plans to be able to explore them and to ask questions and really think deeply about them. So we planted seeds and watched them germinate. We opened up flowers and looked at the different parts inside. We went outside and dug up roots and compared them. We did lots of experiments with food coloring and white carnations and celery, where the students would then open them up and look at the different tubes inside that carried water in and out. And we went outside and measured a field of grass to see how much oxygen that plot of grass provides for one person for one day. And these are just to name a few. I also thought about the structure of each lesson. Um, this is one lesson that I'll be referring to later in the presentation, but I really wanted each activity within the lesson to build on the knowledge that students were, um, were thinking about in the previous activity. So as you can see here, 
for this particular lesson, I wanted ultimately for the lesson to culminate in the students coming together to talk about and decide what would be a good definition for a plant based on these observations that they had done of plants outside. So all of this time, I was collecting data. So I collected videos, I videotaped myself teaching, I collected lesson plans that I had developed, I um, kept a notebook with debrief notes with my professors, with my field instructor, with my mentor teacher. Um, I reflected before and after I taught lessons, and I also interviewed other educators that I knew in and out of the Rashi School to see what they thought would be the best opportunities to cultivate student thinking. So today I'm going to focus mostly on my videos because I found that to be sort of the most compelling um, of the data that I had collected. And just to give you a little bit of an idea of what I did with it, I would rewatch the videos and then transcribe them. Uh, then I created this data chart where I would list all of my teacher moves. So what was I saying or doing in the moment and did it or did it not create an opportunity for student thinking? And what is the evidence for why it did or didn't? So this led me to my first finding, which was that when I looked at conversations that we were having in the class, I realized that during whole class discussions, my in the moment responses to student contributions closed up rather than opened up student thinking. And I'll show you an example of that. This is the lesson that I showed you earlier where I wanted all the students to come together and um, create a definition of a plant. So I prompt them to do this, and as you can see, the students are different colors. They're talking about it. They're saying, you know, is green a good word to use? Is colorful a good word to use? Maybe we should use both or neither. And at the end, I sort of say, so colorful. Let's go with that. And I start typing that up as part of the definition. So I, this summer when I was analyzing my data, I thought about what made me react in this way. Were student responses off topic? I thought, no, I had prompted them to do this exact exercise. Did student responses stray away from the goal of the lesson? And I looked back at my lesson plans and no, the objective for that particular lesson was for them to ultimately come up together with a definition of a plan. But still, student responses felt really unexpected to me. So this led me to my second finding, which is that student contributions often felt unexpected because I hadn't actually considered the range of student comments or ways that I could respond. So even though my entire um, present, my entire inquiry project was based on student thinking, I hadn't actually thought, what could they say and how in the moment could I get those ideas to grow? So I thought of this metaphor um, and if there are any gardeners out here, you know that it takes a lot of time and careful planning to cultivate a garden in which the plants actually produce fruits or vegetables in the end. And similarly, it took a lot, a tremendous amount of work on my end to try to think of what activities and what structure would best suit and cultivate student thinking. And what I was doing in the moment was I was picking the fruit before they were ripe. So as soon as sort of this moment was happening that I was really looking forward to where students would be able to grow their ideas, I was then closing off, shutting down their growth of ideas by cutting down, by shutting down conversations. So this led me to my third funding, which is that in my planning, it's not enough to design learning activities that promote student thinking but I also need to anticipate the kinds of ideas that students might come up with so that I'm better prepared to really allow their ideas to grow in the moment. Thank you. <laughs> um, so in my research, I looked at, when I was trying to think of, huh, how could I do that? How could I respond to students to grow their ideas? I looked at Sarah Michael's Accountable Talk Sourcebook, and she studies classroom discourse. Um, and she gives a lot of very concrete ways for teachers to be able to cultivate thinking as it's happening. And these are just a few of her ideas that I thought were particularly pertained to my area of research. And so looking back at this conversation that we were having that made me realize that I inhibited student thinking, um, 
I thought of, huh, what could I have done in that situation to actually make students grow their ideas? And so what I realized using one of Sarah Michael's talk moves could have been, instead of to say, so let's go with colorful, to say who agrees or disagrees with using the word colorful and why. And not only would this have allowed the students who were already part of the conversation to grow their ideas, but it also would have welcomed other students in the classroom to also respond and share and have sort of an extended debate about this. So in conclusion, um, I found a lot of this to be helpful for my continuing teaching, especially next year. I'm hoping to take this research and be able to plan better for student responses as carefully as the activities because I now realize that you really need to think about both in order to create a really um, deep learning experience for students. I also need to notice and identify the teachable moments as they're happening. So oftentimes students say things that um, are really rich, but we sort of gloss over them because they might not fit in our idea of how the lesson is supposed to go. But um, if I can take advantage of those opportunities and use perhaps some of the literature that I've read this summer, I could really allow their ideas to grow as they're happening.